Okay, welcome to another edition of the Traction Reaction Podcast. I'm Steve Zotke, and joining me from RacingNation.com, it is Eddie Lapine. Welcome to the show, Eddie. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? Doing pretty good, pretty good. And uh, looking forward to going down to Florida next week for the Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring, presented by, of course, Advanced Auto Parts. This is the 70th running of the 12 Hours of Sebring. Things are looking good. We got uh, 53 cars entered. That's up 16 cars from the year previous. And along with the uh, WEC, the World Endurance Championship, once again, it should be a pretty cool event. Well, it's finally nice to get it back on course. I mean, this event ran a couple years ago in 19 with the WEC running at Sebring, and it was really a great event. And, you know, what we've been through the last couple of years covid and all this stuff going around worldwide now we're back to some normality and and i really have seen that this year especially with daytona and and the fans wanting to uh come out to an event uh at every event it's been that way with saint pete amelia island and i think that this is going to probably be the biggest sebring of all time i would say yeah i think i mean uh this is we saw Daytona, such a big crowd there. And then the Sebring is always known for its camping and the party-like atmosphere. And what better place for, I mean, people, you know, think of it kind of like almost like a rubber band that's been bound up for almost two years now. Let it go and people are ready to get out there and start enjoying life again. Weather should be good. It's, it's you know, it's like the spring break of racing uh with with the 12 hours and yeah i think it's going to be a monumental event this year and i mean not only um in the paddock or on the campgrounds there but also in the paddock and in the pits with with nice rebound in sports car racing with the car count with the teams and everything what what kind of sticks out most for you this year so far with daytona well i i have to say imsa has just been reborn and i think a lot has to do with john I think John Doonan has just done an amazing job as taking over as president of IMSA. And you can just see it. You can see how this is going this year with the large car count and the future of it. And I think that he just, you have to credit him because of his long-term relationship and working for Mazda and how he slid into IMSA and how he's making the sport just bigger than ever. And this event at Sebring is just another one for everyone. It's for IMSA and for the WEC. Their start to their season two will begin at uh, this next Friday at Sebring. All five uh, WeatherTech Championship classes are going to race for the second time this year. But for two classes, LMP1 and LMP3, this is the first race of the season that counts towards the season championship for the points championship. Uh, but I think the, the kind of the big news or the, the one driver, a lot of people are, will be looking at is Oliver Jarvis, of course, last year with Mazda uh, winning with them last year. He has a chance for the grand, for the grand slam, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He's an amazing driver. And I think that he's with a great team. And I think, there, there's a lot of favorites there. I mean, you have Sebastian Bourdais, you've got Pipo Durrani. Uh, he's won three times and, you know, he's going to be in there. I, there's so many good. This has got to be one of the best Sebrings of all time, really. When you look at the driver, uh, that the drivers that are going to be there and the teams, lots of winners. Well, and you got... You know, teams like, uh, of course, with Meyer Shank Racing, what a la for the last 12 months, I mean, what a run they've been on with not only with IMSA, but also winning the Indy five, Indianapolis 500 with Elio, uh, the aforementioned, uh, you know, Jarvis being able to do a grand slam. But then you have, you know, you got a lot of teams that are just fighting at, at, at the bit, uh, like Ganassi Racing and that. And is there any other teams in, in, in the prototype class that kind of, like, yeah, th these guys are ready and they can uh, really make a jump here. Well, you got to go with all the favorites, but I think the GT race too after Daytona is going to be another thriller. Uh, I think you're going to, you know, the GT class is going to be 
an amazing race, just like it was at Daytona, going down to the last, I mean, 24 hours. It's a 24 hour sprint race. That's basically what it is. And it went down to the last lap. And I think you're gonna see that there. And Reese Ferrari is gonna be back there strong. And they've always done well at Sebring. And Porsche and the new young guns coming up from Porsche with FAF Motorsports. Mr. Jeanette, uh, he's uh, an incredible young driver that uh, won the 24 hours of Daytona and really a, a nice kid too on top of it, I might add. And they have Philippe Nasser, who's gonna be doing double duty for that team. He'll be running for the Penske team. So yeah. it, there's a lot there. I mean, you almost need three hours to talk about what's going on, but basically, you know, you have Penske is one of the big other, other news stories of them coming back to world racing. And that's going to be in the WEC. And well, let, let's hold off on that. We're going to talk about the WEC in a moment, but it's kind of interesting how, you know, in January, you know, we, 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 we love Daytona it kicks off the racing season. Then that some people say Chili Bowl. I like Chili Bowl, but Daytona, it is an event of it's, it's a neat melting pot of all, all the drivers and that, but you know, it was always an endurance event. And now a lot of these teams go, well, you know, it's flat out all the time. Well, Sebring used to be that way too, but it, it's kind of interesting where you got Daytona, you know, you, you got stress in the cars with the, with the banks and all that's 24 hours, but in a way Sebring is 12 hours, half distance, but the track surface is so much more you know, harder on the cars, you know, you see almost similar attrition rates between the two, but yet, because it's 12 hours, it's, it, it's even more of a sprint than, than uh, Daytona, isn't it, Eddie? Well, totally. Um, it's going back to Dr. Ulrich from Audi Sport. He always told us in, in meetings and stuff like that, uh, 12 hours racing at Sebring is 30 hours at Le Mans. So that's why all these teams worldwide come to test at Sebring. Because if you, know, if you remember last year, how the ending of the race was and through the whole race, I mean, literally cars were falling apart, mm -hmm. uh, suspension parts. I mean, literally just, they couldn't take it. And that's Sebring. That's, it's one of the hardest tracks and it's the best track to test your car and engine and driver. And the traffic is gonna be, it's gonna be a lot harder than Daytona. Daytona, the drivers pretty much get a nice little rest and break going around the banking. And then you go to Sebring and it's just, you gotta be on your toes because traffic comes up so much faster and it's so much narrower and there's no room for error at Sebring. You get out of the line, you're on the marbles and you're done. It's, yeah, it's a lot, a lot of trouble spots. Yeah, Sebastian Bardet is interesting. He moves over to the Ganassi team. Now he, he's got three wins, including last year as defending champion. But this is one thing I, I totally forgot about. Ganassi has only won there once in 2014 with all their successes at all the other tracks, including Daytona. It, 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 you kind of scratch your head thinking that, well, Ganassi is only one one time at Sebring. It kind of blows your mind, doesn't it? Well, you know, Sebring usually becomes one of those tracks that one team and which Action Express is that one team that's always there and always tough to beat. And you get one, you know, there's it's like Wayne Taylor at Daytona. It's like they should change the name yeah. of Daytona. You know, it's like Wayne's always there, no matter what. It's like, that's why it was so nice to see Michael Shank and Helio win. Because these guys, you know, you get to a certain track and the strategy and the engineers, they all work well together and they just do better at a certain tracks, better than others. And that's in any racing. Yeah, it certainly is. And then, uh, of course, with, with uh, Dragon Speed, uh, this is certainly interesting. This is a team that also ran IndyCar for a little bit and, uh, you know, Elton Julian's team. And this is a certainly interesting because you got, okay, Juan, Juan Pablo uh, Montoya and his son is racing. 
So we got yeah. father son Montoya's. Uh, it should be kind of interesting to see how they how they progress. It's gotta be cool. I mean, Juan is one of the most uh, caring fathers. I mean, he was with his son with go karting and turning a wrench and giving him input and. You know, I mean, it's great to see. And it's just like Wayne Taylor with the Taylor boys, the same thing. They, they go-karted, they started down here go-karting because I used to go-kart race with them. And they grow and, together as a family. And that's like the Monta Montoya family. And he is so proud. He's a proud papa. Yeah, and they'll be uh, carrying, of course, their white car with... Uh... A red and blue, but also uh, support for the Ukraine uh, with the Ukrainian war that that's progressing. They're they're going to be have the, the the Ukrainian colors on that car. Now let's talk about Friday's race, and this is a, a series. It's huge in Europe, but it doesn't get a lot of coverage in the U.S. But however, you have a a, a big team moving once again over to it as they have in the past, and that's Team Penske in the World Endurance WEC. Eddie, walk us through that and kind of give us a quick thumbnail sketch of the WEC. Well, first, I'll just start with Penske moving over there to do that. Uh, it's all in preparation to get the team to work together for the future of Penske racing in with Porsche and, mm -hmm. and them going back to Le Mans and Porsche are going to be prototype racing again next year in the future. Next year will be the 100th anniversary of Le Mans. And basically the WEC is, runs worldwide and they start their season in Sebring with a thousand mile race. Importantly, it's a worldwide factory effort from Ferrari, Porsche in the GT classes. And these are the teams and Toyota. And now we see someone, you know, Glickenhaus Team Glickenhaus moving in to Le Mans, and they were they did very well last year. And Romain Dumas, another ex Penske driver, will be driving for him with Ryan Briscoe. Heavy hitters there. I'm sorry. Some heavy hitters there. Well, and then Penske, of course, has the I think underrated Dane Cameron, and then uh, Felipe Nasser and Emmanuel Collard. Pretty strong players there. But Dane Cameron's interesting, the American driver. We he's he's been on uh, previous uh, shows with us, and he's uh you know he's one of these guys. He doesn't have a high profile, but he certainly has the respect in the paddock, doesn't he? Oh, totally. He's he's very quiet, and he gets the job done. And he's you know a, a Penske uh, picture perfect. Uh, yes. driver. Great to see an American going over there and trying that endeavor and you know Penske is going to be successful you know that and it, it's really going to be exciting to see that start to progress next week at Sebring with that team moving over there into the WEC. It'll be Penske Logistics on the car it's going to be yellow with some blue trim number five so keep an eye out for that they're going to be running an Orca uh, cha uh, chassis to begin with so it'll be interesting to see how that uh program develops and of course once again teaming up with penske they've done that a few times in the past and, and have certainly have had success uh how that program builds and builds and then uh once again a return to imza eventually uh any final thoughts on sebring of course once again uh full crowds again uh, walk us through uh, the infield. When, 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 when somebody walks through the infield, what, what's the kind of stuff they see? I'll tell you, I haven't been the same since I uh, went there, uh, what is it, probably over 25 years ago. Uh, I, I was shocked at uh, the party atmosphere that goes on there. It's gotten tame over the last few years. People come there just to witness it. You know, the the party atmosphere, there's family, there's friends and family. I mean, they'll be lined up with motorhomes Sunday for the race next week. Yeah, lining prior. up. I saw that firsthand. We had an SVRA event there uh, about five years ago. 
uh, the weekend before, and on yeah, and that it's on our final day, they were starting to line up already for the for this twelve hour race that was going to occur the the following weekend. We were like, wow, these guys are hardcore. <laughs> I I gotta tell you, there is nothing like Sebring. It's like going to Long Beach. There's nothing like Long yeah. Beach. There's certain venues and races. It's one of those that- icons. Yep. Yeah, and- I certainly agree with that. I'm trying not to, to to bash any other location because Road America is a great place to come to. It's got that certain different family atmospheres, but Sebring is just it's a everything. Bit of a party. And it is, and it's it's totally the opposite of of Road America. Road America is a little hilly in that, but in itself, it, it it's got a it, it, it there's history there with it being a World War II bomber training base. Um, of course, not as much of that old stuff is still there, but there's still components of the airport there that are still hangars. And there's still, still some, if you look hard, there's some pieces of the old track that you can kind of see the 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 history of it if you go exploring. But it is certainly different. I mean, people joke about it. It it, it it's a dump, this and that. Uh, but there, it, it has character. It has a patina to it. The the roughness of the track makes it uh, challenging for the drivers and for the cars and for the engineers trying to set up. But yeah, it 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 it, it has that character. It makes it unique, and, and that's certainly something that we as NASCAR has seen recently. You can only have you you don't really want a formula when it comes to tracks. So eventually, it comes back to bite you. You want that uniqueness of different venues and whether whether it's the Daytona and the uniqueness of running 24 hours on the road course, you got Sebring, Road America, Watkins Glen, Mid Ohio, all those tracks have the uniqueness to them that makes it such an interesting season for the for IMSA and uh, Sebring is, is just is one of those jewels. And it's uh, I totally agree. It, you need to experience that once. Uh, as a motorsports fan, and you'll you'll never forget it. Uh, we got the Hall of Fame celebration that's coming up. Uh, our own David Hobbs is going to be one of the people inducted in, and of course, uh, one of your favorite drivers, Jackie Eeks. You got anything you want to say about Jackie Eeks? Uh, just an incredible person, uh, and you know, I mean, part of history. I mean, when you look back, and you know, him and Mario won that race in '70, and. Yeah, a quick little story about Jackie. Uh, when I first met him, which he was like an idol to me uh, when I grew up. And mm-hmm. Jackie was very shy and very kind of a person that uh, never really went to a lot of uh, vintage things or did much of anything. He'd usually go to Le Mans because he won that race a record amount of times. But uh, I ran into him the first time at Daytona for Porsche Ren Sport. And he was just walking through the pits, looking I'm in the pits, like you'd never even think. And I'm like, that's Jackie Eakes. And I went up to him and, you know, I just, like I said, I mean, growing up as a child right. and racing and being one of those weird kids that really loved Formula One in the 70s and 80s. And, you know, everybody looked at me weird back then, but uh, he well, was- Well, they still of- do, but that's okay. <laughs> so, but just a humble guy. And I've just gotten to know him from all these events because once he started coming to a couple of them, it's just been a snowball effect. Yeah, it's he's been like- at a lot of those events. And, you know, for somebody who- drove for Ferrari, hired by Enzo himself, and and to all the the events he drove in from Le Mans, all the Formula One, and, and the danger, and, and oh. being able to survive that era, and, and uh, you know, you see him today, he looks good for his age, and yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him, and congratulations to all of those uh, going into the Sebring Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's, I, I'll tell you, I went there a few years ago and it's a great thing. You know, when Dindo Capello was uh, inducted and Tom Christensen and, and those guys, you know, I mean, they're just, you know, they love 
being appreciated for something they did a long time ago because most people are forgotten about. Yeah. And that's what's good about this dinner and this event and Sebring because it really builds champions and it, it builds character. The track does. Five people are going in. Uh, of course, the aforementioned Jackie Eeks. Uh, Stefan Johansson is going in. He's a two-time uh, Sebring winner. Had a couple of heartbreaking second-place finishes. Andy Wallace, one of the top drivers in, in, in the 90s. Uh, of course, David Hobbs, friend of the show, will be uh, ha having some content with him coming up in the next couple of weeks. And Walter Cronkite. And this is interesting. People don't realize, people know, you know, CBS, Anchor, Walter Cronkite. He was really big in SCCA uh, in the 50s and that. And if you look, if you ever come across uh, some old films and movies going back in the 50s and early 60s, there's Walter Cronkite out there. And Cron Walter Cronkite had uh, was kind of a, uh, he, drew, he did some driving, but he was also kind of one of those guys behind the scenes and was a supporter of racing back then. So, well, he was a little more than just that guy who, you know, took off his glasses and spoke, you know, to the American right. public, you know. Right. No, I mean, it's it, it's cool that they honor someone that affected the track at that period, you know, because like I just said, they forget about a lot of those people. Yeah, we'll have some content on, on that coming up on the Traction Reaction podcast. Eddie, RacingNation.com, of course, with your photographer partner, Jack Webster. We appreciate all the content you guys produce and uh, look forward to chatting with you again soon. We, we're looking forward to getting together down there. We'll, yeah, it should be fun. To, I'll have to take you around uh, for sure. We'll, we'll, we might have to run some video on that. should be a good time. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Steve. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. You've been listening to the Traction Podcast with Eddie Lapine. I'm Steve Zotke. Don't forget to like and subscribe to all the content on our YouTube channel and then also available on uh, content audio only on Buzzsprout. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.